Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. This is your host, Visibility Catalyst and best-selling publisher, Linda Joy, of Aspire Magazine and Inspired Living Publishing. Thank you for joining me and my special guests on today's show. For over 25 years, I have been drawn to the empowering stories of women who have overcome seemingly insurmountable challenges and went on to change lives with their message and their mission. I believe that in sharing our stories, we inspire, empower, and support other women to believe in the power of possibility. We've all been hit one or more times in our lives, I'm raising my hand there, with what I call the cosmic two-by-four or wake-up call. Those wake-up calls have the power to transform our lives when we listen to them. Today's guest, Dr. Catherine Hayes, experienced this firsthand and joins me today to talk about her experience and so much more. In the moments before waking up on the pavement after a terrible accident, Catherine received a powerful message to change her life. Little did she know that she was about to undertake a journey of awakening that would bring her back to her heart and reconnect her with her true essential self. With grit and perseverance, Catherine rose above her challenging childhood in the projects of South Boston, right in my area, to the heights of academia and the halls of Harvard. But it wasn't until she turned a healing lens on her painful past that she was able to find the answers to her most profound questions. Using tools like the Enneagram that we'll be talking about today, the Diamond Approach, and coaching, Catherine was able to retrace her steps to the places where she had abandoned her heart and from those points of disconnection reestablish a true connection to the deeper knowing, which is the divine self at the heart of all of us. Joining me today is author of the best-selling book, Everything is Going to Be Okay, From the Projects to Harvard to Freedom. Dr. Catherine Hayes is a dual-certified professional co-active coach, a certified Rizzo Hudson Enneagram teacher and International Enneagram Association, certified professional and accredited teacher, a member of the Forbes Coaches Council, a speaker and a highly regarded influencer in the leadership field. She coaches leaders to uncover the truth of who they are so they can live and lead from their highest potential. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you very much for having me, Linda. I'll tell you, your story is so inspiring. I'm honored and blessed to be the publisher. And when we first met, and we just were having conversations, and you started filling me in about your journey and your life, and we got to know each other on such a, um, a deeper level, I said, this is a story that has to be told. This is a journey that needs to be shared because there are so many others on the path who maybe aren't listening to their wake-up calls, and I was one of them. I waited till I got hit with so many freaking cosmic two-by-fours. So take us back, Catherine, to what your life was like just prior to your wake-up call, waking up on the pavement that day. What was it like, and what was your driving force in your life? Well, at the time, I was an uh, associate professor at Harvard University at the School of Dental Medicine. I was a dentist, and uh, I was a public health dentist. I was a single mom. I was working full-time and taking care of my son. And I worked very hard. I did research. I had a lot of responsibilities at the university and a lot of responsibilities at home, as you can imagine. And so my life was very busy. And very full, and I really didn't realize that I was really asleep to really what my heart and my soul wanted. But uh, the universe had other plans. So on a, on a busy day of being at the university and meetings and teaching, et cetera, 
I had taken my dog to the groomer in the morning before I went to work and picked him up at the end of the day. And I took him to get a treat because he never liked going to the groomer, and I wanted to get him one of his favorite treats, bully sticks. We went, uh, I drove to the pet store, and the last thing I remember actually is getting out of the car and coming around to get him, but I don't remember getting him. The next thing I remember, um, I, I was hearing a voice in the distance, uh, kind of a loud voice asking if I was okay. I couldn't see. Everything was completely black. And I remember having a sensation of a profound sense of numbness all the way to the tip of every finger and every toe. And I thought I was paralyzed. And I also remember seeing colleagues of mine having a meeting. And it was like as if I was observing that meeting And I was just very, very confused. But the most profound memory was a really powerful, really a thought, a a deep thought that just traveled through my body like a thunderbolt. And the thought was, it's time to change your life. I was very confused. I didn't know what any of it meant. And then as I finally started to wake up, there was an older gentleman there who helped me wake up. So that was really the talk about two uh, two by fours. <laughs> I used to joke <laughs> that I needed to get hit on the head to wake up. Well, I don't use that joke anymore because I was hit on the head and I woke up. And fortunately, thankfully, I wasn't seriously injured. I had a really serious concussion and was out of work for several weeks. But that shifted everything for you. It shifted everything. So that profound message, it's time to change your life, it really stayed with me. I was very confused at the time because everything was so confusing. I, I really couldn't remember anything from the day um, when I, I somehow made it home and I called the neighbor and I said to her, gee, I think I was supposed to talk with you today. I feel like I'm supposed to call you. She said, well, gee, we just spoke about an hour ago and you were going to watch. I was going to babysit for their girls. They had a death in the family and they were heading to a wake. I couldn't remember that conversation. And so the, the immediate aftermath of the accident was a lot of confusion and a lack of memory. But got to the hospital and fortunately I didn't have a serious brain injury. I had a concussion and was advised that I couldn't work or or drive or anything like that for a couple of weeks, which turned into more of about four weeks, I would say. And I don't remember having like this conscious um, really drive to say, well, I better go change my life now. But it didn't matter because it was planted in my subconscious and things just started to change. I was um, drawn to various different workshops. And in fact, a year to the day after the accident, I went to a, uh, a workshop with Russ Hudson, who wrote the forward for my book. And Russ is really one of the eminent Enneagram teachers in the world. At the time, I didn't know him. I had studied the Enneagram some years before, just a little bit. And it wasn't something that a lot of people knew about, so I kind of put it on the back shelf. Friends of mine were going to this workshop, and I didn't even realize until I got there that it was exactly a year to the day from the accident. And that workshop really was uh, a catalyst for change. And what I love, though, is you, you begin following the signs, because I know from my personal conversations, Catherine, you were the epitome of an overachiever, of someone who set goals and went above and beyond them, and that had become your identity for so long, and I think so many of us can relate to that. Can you talk a little bit about what your identity was before you woke up and how it's transformed um, since you've been using the Enneagram and other, you know, healing modalities sure yeah i i was an overachiever on steroids (laughs) i um so i what when i went to i went to south america when i was 19 i was finishing up dental hygiene school at the time when i graduated high school you know women most women there weren't very many women dentists so i went to dental hygiene school no one encouraged me to go to dental school and i really never gave it a thought And I had an opportunity in um, the second year of my dental hygiene program. So I was 19 years old, and there was a group going to South America to do some volunteer work, and I was selected to go. That was a life-changing experience. At the time, I was still living in public housing projects in South Boston. I'd lived there for 22 years. So at age 19, I traveled to Ecuador, and I saw such poverty that I, I just could not believe the degree of poverty. So that was one thing that really struck me. And the other thing was I was traveling with a medical team. Some of them were dentists, some surgeons, some dental hygienists, nurses, etc. Anyway, we would sit around and have dinner in the evening after a day of work. And many of the discussions centered around um, the future. This was the first trip in the 
future trips were often discussed, and people encouraged me to consider going to dental school. I was already accepted to a public health program at Northwestern University and was just going to go right into public health. But I was encouraged during that trip to go to dental school. And I think the, the encouragement that I received coupled with what I saw as, you know, severe inequities and poverty, it just something triggered in me that I needed to do something with my life that would address inequities and poverty. And, and I think it just really kind of lit a fire. And I think my overachieving really began in earnest at that time. And so when I came home from Ecuador, instead of going to Northwestern to enroll in the public health program that I had been accepted to, I deferred that and I went to Boston College and got my bachelor's degree. And then from there, I went to dental school at Tufts. And then from there, I did a residency at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And then from there, I did a doctorate in epidemiology at Harvard, as well as a dental public health residency. From that, I then um, entered into a full-time academic career. So I was I was highly regarded in my field. I was very, um, you know, ambitious. I did a lot of research myself. I published a lot of papers. I taught. It was busy, busy, busy. So my identity was of, you know, a busy academician with a lot of accomplishments, a lot of letters after my name, and um, that was that was who I was, and that's that's who I thought. I was to be until the accident. Mm. And when I've read your, your book and I've gotten to know you over the last year, Catherine, I've loved hearing the backstory because the woman I know today, um, you've just fully stepped into your power where before everything that was your identity was based on the letters after your name and, and having the accolades, and now it's this beautiful internal shift where you know your value does not come from that, which then adds even more value to yourself. So when we come back from our break, I want to talk about the internal shift for you because you just described of how you were living and what was your driving force prior to the accident. Let's talk about how after the accident you began to awaken to your own sacred truth, your essential self, because your story in the book just, open to my heart. And we'll be back in a moment with Dr. Catherine Hayes of CatherineHayesCoaching.com. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ladies, your story has the power to transform lives. Four-time best-selling boutique publishing company, Inspired Living Publishing, is dedicated to sharing women's stories of hope, love and transformation with the intention to inspire and empower their readers to believe in the power of possibility share your story in an upcoming print or kindle project visit inspiredlivingpublishing.com today are you trying to get from point a to point b and need a little advice connect with the counselors at ohm times advisors whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. And with me today is Dr. Catherine Hayes, the author of the best-selling book, Everything is Going to Be Okay, From the Projects to Harvard to Freedom. Well, so Catherine, you know, when, how did you go? You know, because that was how you were wired, right? We all have, like, I, I think we, we come into the world with a wiring system, and we're here to learn our lessons so we can kind of reprogram ourselves to be more in alignment with our divine self. And that's 
just my view of looking at it. So you just described what your driving force was for many of those years. After the accident, could you feel yourself being, I don't want to say reprogrammed, could you feel that something was different even if you couldn't put your finger on it? I absolutely did. It was really interesting. So um, the immediate aftermath of the accident was I couldn't go to work. Now, I I had been earning money since I was 11 years old, first as a paper girl, <laughs> delivering the Boston Globe and the projects in Southie for several years, and then I worked as like a nurse's aide during high school at nursing homes, and I even cleaned beaches, painted fences, painted bridges, had all kinds of jobs. So I always worked weekends while I was in college and dental school, so to not be working was a new experience. And I remember the very first day after the accident when I was at home, I couldn't even read the newspaper or sit at the computer because my brain just needed to rest. So there was really nothing that I could do other than go for walks and take a nap and visit with friends. And I remember after that very first day, that very relaxing day, I thought to myself, wow, this is actually kind of (laughs) nice. And I remember having the thought, this is probably what normal people do because my life had been so busy. And, yeah, things definitely shifted. And and there were just so many coincidences that happened. So the first coincidence I already described, and that was a year to the day after the accident, I met Russ Hudson at a workshop. That workshop, even though it was just a weekend workshop, really had a profound impact on me. And I remember going back to my office that Monday, still at Harvard, And I went online to buy the book that Russ had mentioned during the workshop, The Wisdom of the Enneagram. And when I went to the website, I found the book, but I also found that they had a training program, and it was a longer workshop, five or six days. So I went to see, well, when is that next one? And it was in about six weeks um, ahead, and it was in San Francisco, California. Well, never before and never since, I had an open airline ticket to San Francisco. I had been doing some legal um, expert witness consulting and was to fly out there to testify at a trial. And in the meantime, they settled the case, and so they had already bought me the airline ticket. So I had this open airline ticket to use. So I said, okay, I'm going. That workshop was life-changing. So Russ took a, a much deeper dive with all of the Enneagram types. At the time, I didn't... I wasn't quite sure what my type was, and when he got to the type three, which is the overachiever, as he was describing the type three and how they spend their lives um, being, you know, class president, A student, you know, captain of the teams, achieve, 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 but really what was underneath that was an unconscious need to prove themselves, Um, and it was really mostly to prove themselves to the nurturing person in their life, usually their mom. And something hit me really like a ton of bricks, and I I actually broke down and sobbed and really don't remember ever sobbing so deeply in my life, but it was such an awakening of, oh, my goodness, I had lived my entire life to prove my value, and I had really lost touch with what was in my own heart. And I remember at the break um, after that discussion of the Type 3 where I was quite emotional, and I went up to Russ during the break, and I said to him, gosh, Russ, I think I'm a type three. And he said, I think you're right. And I said to him, and I don't know know where these words came from, but I, I said, you know, I think the reason I'm here, meaning in this lifetime, is to help people deepen their connection to the divine. And we both just looked at each other, and I said, gosh, I don't know where that came from. And and we both knew that that was a sacred moment, and it was really life-changing. It's been life-changing for those who are now in your life that you're serving, because you're one of the you know, one of the most well-respected leadership coaches. But you bring this powerful blend, Catherine, of the spiritual as well as the powerful tools as a leadership coach. So that moment when that divine truth just spoke through you, that's when you chose to dive deeper on a personal level um, into the Enneagram teachings, teachings. And then did you begin incorporating it in your leadership role I'm sorry, it really just work right away, or was it just organic? It was organic. Um, initially, I was really on this path with the Enneagram for my own personal growth. And as I continued to work with the Enneagram and, and continued through the training program, I realized just how, and not only had it deeply impacted my life, but how this was a tool, a really, I consider the Enneagram to be uh, really a sacred gift to the world. It's a gift to help people really liberate us from our human suffering. It's a, 
a map of the psyche to help us to understand our unconscious behaviors and patterns that can really hold us back in life and kind of limit us to our kind of smaller ego self. Understanding our Enneagram type helps us to open up to the deeper truth of who we are and the more expansive aspect of the depth of who we are. And I have found it to be incredibly helpful in the leadership journey. I first used it as um, in my own leadership role and working with faculty members that I was mentoring, et cetera, students. But now what I do, um, I've left, I left academics back in 2010 and started my own coaching and consulting business because really I wanted to shift into really helping people in the workplace and in academic institutions. People are people, whether they're at home or at work. And it, you can read all kinds of reports that are out there these days that people in the workplace are miserable and feel disconnected, et cetera. And so the Enneagram is such a wonderful tool for helping people to wake up at work and to live a more fulfilling work life. And it's powerful how what I've discovered about it in the little bit that I know is it's not a it's not taught from a place of judgment that one Enneagram type is another. It's actually taught so compassionately to help you understand yourself without self-judgment, with self-compassion. Is that accurately describe what your feelings are on the Enneagram? Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought that up. You know, the Enneagram is, uh, one of the underpinnings of the Enneagram is compassion. And there's nine types within the Enneagram. No one of them are qualitative or quantitatively distinct from the other. Each type has its own inherent gifts and its own, uh, its own inherent challenges. The way that the Enneagram was taught to me by my teachers, Don Riso and Russ Hudson, was with a deep compassion. And, in fact, I believe that's why I was able to really see that, that my type was the overachiever because the way they taught it was without any judgment. You know, we're all on this human journey of really trying to uncover the truth of who we are. The Enneagram gives us a tool for that awakening. Um, I teach it, and I hold it with a lot of compassion. And it's, with, it's really a teaching that's imbued with grace and wisdom, compassion, and a tool that I see absolutely transforms people's lives in a beautiful and kind-hearted way. That's beautiful because it's empowering, right? Yeah. Now, when you discovered that you were the overachiever, after your accident, you described this moment. Let me go back for a moment. You described that moment that day after when you couldn't do anything. And what I heard as you shared that was in that moment, you were just being. You were just the essence of who you are without the labels. Right. And so when you discovered, you know, fast forward a year or so, that you were an overachiever. Did you immediately reconnect with that moment when you realized and felt in your body and in your soul that moment a year prior where you were just the essence of who you are? Because like, that hit me immediately like, oh, wow, she was really just tapped into her essence. And I think a lot of us have forgotten what that's like. Yeah, absolutely. I <clears throat> absolutely felt that I was in a state of being. And at the end of that workshop, the one in San Francisco, I had a profound moment of that where at the end of this beautiful workshop where a lot of truths were uncovered, I walked this beautiful labyrinth. It's at a, a retreat center called the Mercy Center. And this labyrinth was so beautiful. It had it was very ecumenical. It had the Buddha, St. Francis, Mother Mary. It had Kuan Yin. It was just beautiful with all these lovely flowers. And as I finished that labyrinth, I sat in the center, and I had such a profound and deep sense of being purely in a state of being. It was complete and utter silence, nothing going on in my head, a completely grounded body. And it, to this day, it's a touchstone moment for me of just how wonderful it is to experience the depth of our being without any distractions. That is so beautifully said. And is, do you feel that so many of us now, I know what, what I see in my circle, you know, in the audience that I serve, there are a lot of us women, entrepreneurs, corporate America. Um, it doesn't really matter what the label is, but we're waking up. We are waking up from the busyness and the doing and saying, how the heck did I get here? And I want more. It's like this deep yearning. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I, I absolutely feel that as well, Linda, and my clients and colleagues, et cetera, that there is this yearning, this a, a sense that, yeah, there's something more to life than these titles, this busyness, this, you know, being successful. There's something deeper that people are longing for. And really when we connect to the depth and the truth of who we are, that longing tends to, to dissipate because we're connected to something deeper. And that's beautiful. Now, how did it unfold for you? How, I guess my deepest question is, you were so embedded in that old um, role that that was your core identity was the overachiever. I know so many who feel um, that may be listening who feel like, how do you change it? How do you shift it? How did the Enneagram give you the power to begin that journey? Because so many of us, we can sometimes identify where we are, but it's the journey of transformation that um, we struggle with. So could you talk a little bit about that journey and the unfolding and how you use the Enneagram? Sure. So as I continued my personal journey with the Enneagram, I was getting more and more in touch with, really with my heart, with my heart's desires. Excuse me. (coughs) Excuse me. Um, And I began to see, um, sorry, Linda, I have a a little tickle. I'm going to take a sip of water. Um, I began to see how my life was really centered around the doing aspect of my being and not the being aspect. And I remember a really profound um, experience and this uh, work that's called the Diamond Approach work. And my teachers, Russ and Dawn, had often talked about the Diamond Approach, which is really a it's, there's no dogma in the diamond approach. It's a way to deepen your experience of your essential self. So it's really looking at what it is in life that kind of blocks us from living as the truth of who we are in the world. And we did this one exercise one day where we were asked to explore how much of our time, effort, resources, et cetera, did we direct to our false self, i.e., the you know success-oriented self in my case, and how much did we direct towards supporting our being or essential self? And it was just incredibly eye-opening for, for me and the people I was working with to see that the majority of our efforts, our energy, our resources were shoring up this false self, like keeping the, you know, reputation going, staying, you know, working hard, writing these papers, going to conferences, kind of these endless activities. And yet the things that really brought us close to our being meditation, slowing down, maybe writing, uh, hiking, whatever it is that connects you to the depth of who you are, were such a smaller percentage of life. And to me, that was such an eye-opener. And I thought, this is the path I want to be on. I want to continue to kind of peel away the layers of the personality that are keeping me stuck in a place of uh, doing, 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 achieving, 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 and bringing me to a place of truth and depth of who I was. And I, I really <clears throat> went on a deep spiritual journey for, for many years, and actually I'm still on that, and I probably will be for the rest of my life. But as I began to do more and more deep exploration of what was really in my heart, what was really in my soul, and what I really felt that I was here to do, which I believe is to help people deepen their connection to the divine, uncover the truth of who they are, and really live, live their gifts and share their gifts with the world. Because I believe ultimately when we're at our highest potential, we are being of service to the world as well. well I truly believe that too, and that's why I host this show, because I want stories like this um, to get out, because I believe that, as I shared at the beginning, that when we share our stories of transformation, there's always someone who is listening, whether it's on a radio show, it doesn't matter um, where they're getting the message. They're listening, they're saying, that's me. I didn't know there was another way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and that's happened to me multiple times in my life where I felt stuck. I didn't, couldn't see the next step. And then I would listen to a show or pick up a book, and that's why... I am, again, so wanted to be a publisher for Everything is Going to Be Okay because when readers 
take in that book, the message, your journey, how you transformed your life, how um, it all unfolded for you, it's going to help them believe in the power of possibility. But there's going to be an insight or aha where they say, this is what I'm yearning for. I just didn't know how to put it into words. Yeah, I do believe that. <clears throat> I believe that the more we share our stories, the more we can weave together a tapestry of the truth of humanity and the truth of human nature. So as each of us contributes to that tapestry of the human nature and each of us contributes our story, the more we are able to weave together a broader picture of what human nature really is. And so that's why I wanted to share my story, and I hope others will be inspired to share theirs. It's so true. And there's something I want to touch on, too, because here you are, you've been in academia, and you speak and teach and hold workshops for multiple organizations. Now, as, this, as you embody the teachings of the Enneagram, how has it been received? I know, but I want you to share with the audience. How has it been received in these organizations where people are so used to being overachievers? Yeah. I think, you know, people are used to being overachievers, but... In organizations, people are wanting to wake up, too. And there's yes. actually um, an interesting report that I read last year. It's from the Gallup organization, which we all know about when they do the surveys of, uh, you know, people, which TV shows they watch, et cetera. But they've been studying corporations and corporate life for many, many years. And there was a um, report that they put out that came out last year in 2017 that talked about how a very low percentage of American workers feel engaged at work, maybe about a third, and even a lower percentage uh, feel that they really know what the direction of their organization is. And so people are feeling kind of flat and disengaged at work, and that's actually resulting in problems with productivity and lost profits, et cetera. The report also suggested that instead of really focusing on things such as performance plans and performance reviews, that organizations really start to focus on bringing, bringing out the best in their employees and coaching them. And there's lots of different assessments that are used in various organizations, and, um, and they help people to see kind of uh, what their strengths are. But the Enneagram takes it a step further. The Enneagram helps people to see not only what their strengths are, but it gives them a path for growth. So one of the things Don Riso and Ross Hudson used to always say is your Enneagram type is not who you are, it's who you are not. Because our Enneagram type is really our constricted, contracted ego self. Once we understand our Enneagram type and see how our ego self has been living our life for us, we can open up to the more expansive aspects of who we are. I have found that this work in organizations is really life-changing for people. I have found people that have been really kind of contracted around particular issues in the workplace and maybe having challenges getting along with colleagues and coworkers. Once they have this compassionate lens, which we talked about earlier, the Enneagram is a very compassionate lens to look at oneself through. And once they have that and they're guided by someone who has the knowledge and the experience with the Enneagram, it's life-changing for people in organizations. It helps them to, to relax into more of the truth of who they are, bring their gifts forward to the team, to the organization, get along better with others, have compassion for one another, because as people learn about the Enneagram, learn about their own type, they learn about the type of their coworkers, and there's a much more cohesive and compassionate way that people can work together. Yeah, because it's like this understanding of why they were, if they're speaking to themselves individually, why they were always triggered in circum certain circumstances. Now it's like, oh, I see why. I know how to change it. I have the tools. Let me look at my own triggers. It shifts the energy. Exactly. Of the leadership Absolutely. circle. And this isn't just, you know, and I, I want to clarify, we're talking leadership right now in organizations, but the Enneagram can be used in your personal relationships, your family, your own personal and spiritual journey. Um, like you started, as you shared, you started it for your own personal and spiritual development. Absolutely. It's really, it is a tool for for humanity. And I work with private clients as well, one-on-one. -on -one. I work with couples. It's helpful for them to understand each other and what the triggers of each other are and what's underlying those triggers. 
So, and very often what's underlying the triggers is a particular fear. And once we see that, we can have a lot more compassion for that behavior. So the Enneagram is a very, very versatile uh, tool. It's a, a beautiful teaching that can help all people to live a more peaceful life. And now while I'm thinking of it, I want to invite everyone to learn more about Catherine's services at katherinehayescoaching.com. And I want to give out another URL because it is going to be okay. Dot com, and that's Catherine's new best-selling book that was just recently released by Inspire Living Publishing. So, Catherine, you shared that you work with couples, you work with people individually, you work in corporations. What do you see is really shifting in the world that more and more of us are being called to awaken, awaken to our center, our inner self, and, and release the labels in the world because I'm going through it personally myself right now. I feel like an internal shift of I'm looking at everything in my life saying, is this as important to me today as it was when I created it? And if not, I'm letting it go, despite outside you know, um, influences that would love to see me keep certain things. Are you noticing that trend too in your clients? I am. I'm noticing that people are longing to it, it's one of my spiritual teachers defined it this way and I think it's a great definition is that or distinction I should say every human being has an itch <laughs> like there's some itch there's some sense of like gosh there's something here that I know I need to explore and I just don't know exactly what it is it's as if people are really wanting to open up more to who they really are and not who they had to become in their families, in their relationships, in their workplace. But who am I underneath this? What are some of the things that I have forgotten, that I've disconnected from? And I do a, um, an, uh, an exercise with clients where, you know, I get them into a quiet kind of meditative place, and I have them recall either moments in time or periods of their life where they felt like, ah, oh, everything is just right. Life is going smoothly. This is exactly what I want to be doing, exactly where I want to be. And I have them describe that experience, and it can come from any time in their life. And as they describe it, I have them describe how, how they felt, what, what are they feeling in their body, what are the emotions like. So as we re- and, I, and I do that multiple times with them, and what we pull from those um, memories is – uh, a list of like values, things that are so important to people, and they, they're reminded of parts of themselves that maybe they fell asleep to. And really a lot of this is their heart's desires, their, what's their soul's journey. And as we do more and more work to just uncover what's already there within us, aspects of our life that we may have forgotten that really lit us up and made us come alive, and in coaching we help clients to really reconnect to those experiences, and, and in doing so, they reconnect to a part of themselves that is more awake and living uh, a life that's really full and rich. And, and isn't that what we truly all want? We might not be able to say that, but that's what I believe is that inner yearning, a life that is full and rich, that's created on moments, not, not doing and chasing and achieving and striving. It took me most of my life to figure that out. And I know you're as passionate as I am about inspiring people not to wait till the majority of their life is over, right, to wake up now to tap into their divine truth. How has the teachings changed your life? How, uh, how do you feel in your body now, your spirit, all of it? Because we know where you were before as we started the conversation, Tell us what it is like now living from this space, decision-making, life, Mm -hmm. all of it. Sure. Well, I think before the accident, I was really living from my head. And um, it was all about thinking, planning, doing, et cetera. I really wasn't connected to the wisdom of my body. And a lot of the work that I've done in my own personal journey is reconnecting to the body wisdom. And I use that a lot in my own life and in coaching. I really... um, I trust my gut instincts. I, you know, for example, if I'm working with a client and they say something or I have an intuition about something, I get a a real rush of like chills through my body and I'll share with them 
this, there's some truth in the space here, so let's explore this more deeply. And that comes from uh, a body wisdom. So I really, really connect with my body wisdom. And I remember the moment that I reconnected with that. It was actually during an Enneagram training. It was um, a very experiential training, and we did a lot of uh, reconnecting with our body. And I was struck at how um, cut off I had been from my body wisdom. And most of us had that experience. I re- yeah. I'm with you on that. I, that was yeah. my greatest struggle, so I can really relate to this conversation. I think it's true for a lot of people, Linda. It's, you know, we are, we are trained in school to think, 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 and use our brain, and there's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, and when I teach a workshop, I always say to people, we're always trained to listen with our mind, but I'm going to invite you to listen with your body and your heart. So if there's something that comes through as I'm teaching, and you feel a sensation in your body, pay attention to it. You feel a sensation in your heart, pay attention to it. Because and I'm actually, I just completed a neuroscience and coaching training this weekend, as a matter of fact. And one of the things we talked a lot about, too, is that, you know, our heart and our gut have a, a brain, a set of neurons. They, they inform our being. And yet in our, in our culture, and I think in many cultures, we, are, we get cut off from that. So I have really been on a journey of reconnecting with the depth of all of the wisdom that's available to me and helping others do the same. I think it's so important. And when we come back from a final break, I want to talk about, for those who are listening, saying, well, I don't know what that means, body wisdom. I'd love for you to use a couple examples of what it may feel like in their body, what they may hear, what sensations they may have, because like you, it wasn't until I started reconnecting with my body that my intuition went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And then I could start to change my life from that place. So we'll talk about that and so much more in the last segment. I'll be back in a moment with Dr. Katherine Hayes of KatherineHayesCoaching.com. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. The secret to success in life and in business is learning to understand yourself. Because the more you can see what is underneath your reactions empowers you to become a more inspiring, and impactful leader. Whether you're looking to develop into a more effective leader in your business, organization, family, or relationship, Dr. Katherine Hayes can help you develop your inherent leadership potential using the power of the Enneagram. Katherine is a dual certified professional leadership and life coach, Enneagram facilitator, speaker, a member of the Forbes Coaches Council, and the author of the best-selling book, Everything is Going to Be Okay. From the projects to Harvard to freedom. If you're ready to discover how your Enneagram personality type drives your patterns of behaviors so you can be empowered to live and lead with more confidence and ease, schedule a call with Dr. Catherine today at CatherineHayesCoaching.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America in your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is OTRFM. Part of the IOM Radio Network. You're listening to the Inspired Conversation Show 
I'm your host, Linda Joy, and with me today is the best-selling author of Everything is Going to Be Okay, From the Projects to Harvard to Freedom, Dr. Catherine Hayes. So, Catherine, right before the break, we are talking about body wisdom. In this last segment, I'd like to talk a little more about that because I know when I first started trying to reconnect with my body after 50 years of ignoring it, um, I wasn't quite sure what it even meant. And you just, right before the break, you beautifully started describing what it felt like for you. What are some of the ways if someone wanted to sit today and try to reconnect with their body, what is something they could do? Or any other of the guidance you have? Sure. One of the simplest things, and this sound this is gonna sound, you know, very trite, but I can tell you it's so important. I always have my clients sit uncrossed arms, uncrossed legs, and really focus on the connection between the soles of their feet and the floor. And bring all their attention and all their breathing to the soles of their feet. And feeling that connection, the ground beneath us, connecting with that energy, it's immediately grounding. And what I also invite people to do is, as they're breathing, to imagine that they're actually breathing through their feet. So they're breathing in that grounding energy. And with each breath, they breathe that in further and further up their body, through their feet, their ankles, all the way up their legs, through their torso, their entire body. So it takes, you know, several minutes, but as people connect with that energy and bring it in through the body, what that does is it brings us into the present moment. When we're fully inhabiting our body and we're feeling the energy in our body, we are inhabiting the present moment. So we're not worrying about the future. We're not lamenting about the past. We're in the present moment. When we're in the present moment, our body is with us and alive And what I would do with people is, as I have them connect and relax into their body's wisdom, we'll then explore something, whether it's a particular topic that they're working on. For example, um, should I change jobs? That's often a question that people have. And I have them really connect with their body wisdom and connect with that sense of knowing that the body has about this. It can come in the form of a certain lightness, a certain energy in the body, And if there is a particular area in the body where they're feeling a collection of energy, let's say, you know, I ask them to just tap into that, breathe into it, get any message that that might be there. And it's really quite remarkable how much wisdom our body holds for us. And if we can just slow down, connect with our breathing, connect with the ground beneath us, and bring that grounding energy throughout our body, our body wisdom shows up because it's always there. We just tend to not listen to it. Yeah, and for me, I uh, noticed that I can tell when I'm in my head too much because I, I had a saying. Remember you said you had a saying of it's going to take a, um, you know, a wake-up call to get you to yeah. stop, and then you got the wake-up call? What I said for many years, and I, I don't know why I use these words, especially my 20s and 30s, part of my 40s, I always said a statement, which I now know was my divine truth trying to tell me. I always said, I feel like I exist from the head up. Mm -hmm. And isn't that funny that I said that numerous times, and that was my body trying to say to me, hello, what about me? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I began to integrate the two back together again Mm -hmm. that everything aligned for me. So the breath has been important because I was one of those that I noticed during that stage of my life. I held my breath a lot, Catherine. Sure. A lot of people do, Linda. Yeah. I, well, I couldn't believe that. I'm like, what do you mean I'm holding my breath? They're like, Linda, you, you're consistently holding your breath. So you have noticed that also for, for those who struggle with you know, some type of body disconnection. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I really help people to do is just reconnect with that breath. And, you know, in, when I'm doing a relaxation with them, I just have them notice the breathing, not even have to change it, but just notice it. And just by bringing our attention to our breathing, it just slows it down. It makes it deeper. And, you know, so it's not the shallow kind of rapid breathing that keeps us in a heightened state of anxiety. But when we have breaths that are more deliberate and slower it brings us more into our body it's so true and i've noticed that 
when I'm feeling disconnected, if I go outside and just do exactly what you just shared, even if it's three minutes of my day, and it doesn't matter. We can all say we're too busy to take time out, but the truth is we need to do that if we want to experience um, our own truth in our lives, right? We can't keep disconnecting and going at the speed of light. Um, You know, as we come to an end of our conversation, Catherine, I want to again invite everyone to visit going to be okay.com to order a copy of Catherine's new book to dive deeper into her story, um, how she transformed her life using the Enneagram and um, other tools. What piece of wisdom would you like to leave regarding the Enneagram, this path that so many of us are on? What piece of inspiration comes to you that you'd like to leave our listeners with in the next few minutes? I think one of the things that comes to me, Linda, is actually the title of my book and where that came from. When I was six years old and walking through the projects of South Boston by myself one day on my way to school, just like I had that profound message at the time of the accident, I had a profound message as a young girl, and the message was, everything's going to be okay. It, It passed through me just like that message after the accident. It passed through my entire body. I felt this sense of like, peace and calm come over me and I completely trusted that message that everything was going to be okay and it really became a touchstone for my life there were many challenging moments in my life and I would always remind myself of that truth because I believe it was grace at the time I was six years old I didn't know that looking back I believe that I was touched by grace and it was a moment of just divine intervention letting me know as a young child to trust that everything's going to be okay. And so the title of my book, Everything's Going to Be Okay, is not some trite expression of don't worry, everything's going to be okay, but rather a deep knowing that I experienced and that I trust to this day. And I do believe that everything's going to be okay. It doesn't mean that every day is going to be bliss bunnies and rainbows (laughs) because we all have our human challenges. But I do believe that everything is going to be okay. Oh, it's a powerful message, Catherine. And when I read that first part of your book, uh, I told you, I had tears in my eyes Mm -hmm. because we all need someone to remind us of that divine truth. And life isn't perfect. Life is going to happen. We are going to experience trials and tribulations. But the divine truth is everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to invite everyone, take a moment, visit Catherine HayesCoaching.com to learn more about Catherine's services, workshops, events, and scheduling a call with her so you can learn more about how the Enneagram can transform your life. And also be sure to grab a copy of her best-selling book, Everything is Going to Be Okay. You can do that at GoingToBeOK.com. I invite you to join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on the Om Times Network for the live show, or you can listen to the Inspired Conversation show on iTunes and across multiple uh, podcast platforms at your convenience. Until next time, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness, my friends. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.